Minnesota state legislative session begins Tuesday and local DFL leaders are laying out their priorities. Eric Nelson has more. On a clear royal blue sky day in St. Paul, the DFL presented a clear 2020 vision for the upcoming session. Minnesotans have told us that they want a Minnesota that works better for everyone. They've told us they want world-class schools, affordable and accessible health care, economic security for their families, and safe and inclusive communities. Local DFL leaders Melissa Hortman and Ryan Winkler want to close the opportunity gap that exists in some communities and push for early childhood learning. We think that the most important thing is to get kids off to the right st start. And in order to close the opportunity gap, we have to look at those littlest learners. The Dems also want to create more affordable daycare options in Minnesota. Child care is a crisis throughout Minnesota, whether that's in the suburbs, whether that is in rural communities, whether that's in expanding uh, regional centers. Uh, regardless of where you go, the ability to find child care at all is increasingly difficult for Minnesota. Other key parts of the DFL values plan include being active on climate change and passing tougher gun laws. Everybody who uh, wants to purchase a firearm should have a criminal background check. And we need to make sure that guns are not in the hands of people who shouldn't have them when they shouldn't have them. House Speaker Hortman is hoping that Republicans, in her words, will stop creating division with their stances on immigrants and the poor. This demonize and divide, uh, it may give them some partisan advantage in some uh, political races that, that are running, but it's ultimately very destructive. Now, of course, if the Democrats want any of these changes to happen, they're going to need bipartisan cooperation because they are in the minority in the Senate. Reporting in St. Paul, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. The Animal Humane Society is trying to ease concerns about the coronavirus that originated in China and has caused a global health scare. In veterinary medicine, the coronavirus is actually a very common respiratory infection in cats, and it often shows up as a gastrointestinal illness in dogs. The Animal Humane Society has heard from people expressing concern about getting the virus from their pets, but experts say that is not the case. Coronavirus is very species specific, meaning that the species of humans only have to worry about catching it from other humans. Dogs catch from dogs, cats catch from, catch from cats, that kind of thing. The coronavirus is also typically not fatal for pets. Meanwhile, coronavirus concerns have impacted Maple Grove's largest employer. Boston Scientific reported this week that its global sales last year reached its highest point in 10 years. However, the company is lowering expectations for this year due to the outbreak. Boston Scientific has a small but growing business operation in China. The company expects to lose as much as $40 million in revenue in the first quarter. It doesn't take much to be kind to one another. And as Delane Cleveland reports, a Golden Valley woman is making it her mission to spread kindness and clothing to those in need in a unique way. Winters in Minnesota can be unforgiving. The bitter cold forces many people to stay indoors, and if they have to go outside, it requires the proper attire. But for those without a home, the proper clothing might be hard to come by. We're doing some really, really great things for a lot of people. That's where Michelle Christensen comes in. She's the founder of One Good Deed, which is a group of volunteers that commits to doing at least one good deed a month. It doesn't have to be large and expansive. It just needs to come from your heart. One Good Deed is behind a recent scarf bombing campaign that spread cold weather gear throughout parks known for homelessness in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Each item had a tag attached that said, take me. I'm not lost. I'm yours. We do everything from jackets to scarves to hats to snow pants to boots. So even though the title is scarf bombing, it's a little bit of everything. Does everybody have scissors or do I need I, to supply? But scarf bombing was last month. Thank you so much for coming. This month, she and a group of volunteers are busy working on a new project inside Michelle's Golden Valley home. She does a great job of um, getting people together and organizing uh, our projects. Nice. The group is making plastic yarn or plarn out of plastic bags. I'm a better cutter, I think. It's, <laughs> it's, it's up for a vote here right now. Eventually, a different group of volunteers with the ability to crochet will take the plarn and turn them into plastic mats. So we're going to give the plastic mats to homeless people. So it keeps them off the cold concrete 
it keeps them dry. Oh, yeah. It takes about 500 plastic bags to make one mat. But for this group of volunteers, the manual labor involved is a small sacrifice to make to help bring joy and warmth to those who need it most. And we're doing it just because it's the right thing to do, and it feels really good. In Golden Valley, Delaney Cleveland, CCX News. The volunteers from One Good Deed plan to distribute the mats in the spring at Loring Park under the I-94 bridge near Dunwoody Institute and near the Basilica of St. Mary in Minneapolis. Golden Valley is a finalist to win a new outdoor ice rink from the Minnesota Wild, but that's only if they win an online contest first. What we would like to have is up here at Brookview. Um, right behind me, if you can see, we, we have uh, four outdoor synthetic curling rinks. And of course, on the golf course, a, a winter recreation trail, winter disc golf. We thought it'd be a great addition to add an outdoor skating rink. The Minnesota Wilds Outdoor Ice Rink Contest will donate two temporary ice rinks to two communities in order to grow the game of hockey. If you'd like to vote, we have the link on our website and it's also on the city's website too. Also this weekend at Brookview Golden Valley, there will be the Twin Cities Ice Bowl. The city of Golden Valley and Brookview are nice enough to offer the grounds of, of, of the golf course, uh, which we convert into two 18-hole disc golf courses this year. So there's rubber tee pads and, and disc golf baskets out set up on a blue course and a red course. Organizers expect about 200 people this Saturday for a day full of disc golf and more. We have more information posted on our website. Spots in the state Nordic ski meet are on the line this week. A picture perfect day greeted skiers at the section five meet. Highlights from this one, Mabel Girls' Christina Bolser starts with a sizable lead in the girls' pursuit after a strong classic race, and she wins easily by more than a minute. Bolser helps the Crimson to the team title as well. Grace Collier of the Crimson races well, and she places fourth. Maple Grove's Lauren Tillman edges Champlin Park's Annie Miller for fifth place. Miller advances to state as an individual. Then it's the boys' turn. C.J. Young of Maple Grove starts second in the pursuit. The boys' champion, Cooper Lennox of Mora, he has 45 seconds ahead of the rest of the pack to easily win the section. Young of Maple Grove holds on to second place, and the Crimson also take the boys' team title. Nick Chomi of Osseo is headed to state as an individual after placing third. Champlain Park's team is second to also qualify for state. Jack Nightingale on the left is fifth, two teammates right behind him. We talked to three state qualifiers. Yeah, it was really good. Snow was super fast and getting a payoff from all the work we've put in the past year and so, so it was a really good racing day. I qualified, this is my third time for Nordic now, so I knew I wanted to again, and our, my biggest goal for today was to get the team there with me. It's really nice to have your team with you at State, and that was our biggest thing going into today. I was a little shocked to find I was third after the classic race, and then uh, I made it my goal to maintain that spot no matter what. We'll have highlights from the Section 6 meet starting Friday afternoon on CCX Sports along with Section 5 Alpine skiing. There are big families, and then there is the Witt family. We meet the last of the Witt children to play sports at Champlain Park High School on this week's Sports Jam show on CCX. Here's part of what you'll see. If you've spent any time around Champlain Park Athletics in the past two decades, you've probably come across the last name Witt. Back out, Witt for three, and that's good. Dominic Witt is the last sibling to shoot up in navy and silver. And there are just a few that came before him. So it's Melissa, Brady, Adam, Jenna, Dan, Matt, Colin, Courtney, Zachary, Brennan, Claire, Cam, Lauren, and me. That's 14 wits, nine boys and five girls who have all played at least one varsity sport at Champlain Park. And yeah, people know who Dom is. It's pretty well known with my friends. They're like, oh, or like when I first met him, they're like, oh, are you one of the 14? I was like, yeah, I am. Like they knew like my siblings growing up because like they would come to the games and hear like my brothers and sisters' names be announced. You can see the rest of that story and more on the February 3rd edition of Sports Jam. Look for it online at ccxmedia.org. If you've ever been fishing and wonder where the fish are hiding out, Terry Tuma offers some areas to look in this week's CCX Ice Fishing Tip. 
There have been several questions asked about what is the difference between a transition and an edge. There really isn't any difference, but we as anglers, open water and ice fishing, must understand what's more commonly referred to, especially in the Midwest, edges. Transition areas are also identically the same, and what it is, it's a sort of a refined area, different than the surrounding areas. For instance, we all know about weed edges. We've heard that many, many times. A hard bottom meeting a soft and another edge, but the clam beds, are, that's an edge, right at the edge of that. A current break is an edge. Uh, fast water meaning slow water. Uh, algae blooms is an edge. You can go on and on. Of course, then with vegetation, you can have two different types of weed growth. And generally speaking, when you have that weed growth, where they meet that becomes an edge. Also, too, is another edge is where that weed growth does meet. But generally speaking, there's going to be two different types of bottom. And then you want to carry it to the next step, looking for something unique or different. Just because you have an edge, maybe you want to look for an inside turn. Maybe there's some rocks along that inside turn. You need your electronics. If it's newly, get a map out. And what really affects these locations, along with these uh, concentrated areas of edges and transition areas, of course, is food. No food, no fish, and fishing pressure is the second element.